Good morning, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass in honor of the memorial of our blessed mother's heart, Immaculate Heart of Mary. In this Mass, we pray for this mother's heart to love her children, to protect them, and to keep them safe under her shade. This Mass is also going to be offered for Jerry Schoenfeld, who passed away yesterday, the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart that our Blessed Mother may conduct him to a place of safety and peace in God's presence. I pray for Virginia and her children as they, they grieve the passing of their father and husband. I also pray for those who have birthdays and anniversaries today. Pray for those who are sick and have asked prayers. Pray for those whose families are in distress, that God may be with you. Pray for those who are without employment at this time. Pray for those who have asked for prayers for other needs. May our Blessed Mother bring all your intentions before her son. Our opening hymn for this Mass will be Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. Oh Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we celebrate the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You know, yesterday we celebrated the Sacred Heart of Jesus. These are two hearts that are never separated, always together. And so we go through these hearts and seek the blessings of God. This Mass is going to be offered for the intentions that you have brought here and for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. Pray that God may help you find His love, His mercy, that above all an answer to your prayers. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercies, your only Son, while hanging on the cross, appointed Mary his mother to be our mother also. Like her and under her loving heart, may your church grow day by day, rejoice in the holiness of its children, and so attract to itself the peoples of the earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Second Chronicles. After the death of Jehodiah, the princess of Judah came and paid homage to King Josh, and the king then listened to them. They forsook the temple of the Lord, the God, of their fathers and began to serve the sacred poles and the idols and because of this crime of theirs wrath came upon judah and jerusalem although prophets were sent to them to convert them to the lord 
the people would not listen to their warnings. Then the Spirit of God possessed Zechariah, son of Jehoda, the priest. He took his stand above the people and said to them, God says, Why are you transgressing the Lord's commands? So that you cannot prosper. Because you have abandoned the Lord, he has abandoned you. But they conspired against him. And at the king's order, they stoned him to death in the court of the Lord's temple. Thus, King George was unmindful of the devotion shown him by Jehoda, Zechariah's father, and slew his son. And as Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. At the turn of the year, a force of Arameans came up against George. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem, did away with all the princes of the people, and sent all their spoils to the king of Damascus. Though the Aramean force came with few men, the Lord surrendered a large, a very large force into their power because Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers. So punishment was meted upon George. After the Arameans had departed from him, leaving him in breathing suffering, his servant conspired against him because of the mother of the son of Jehoda the priest. He was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I continue your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will maintain my love for my servants. Forever I will maintain my kindness towards him. My covenant with him stands firm. I will make his prosperity endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. Forever I will maintain my love for my servants. If his sons forsake my law and walk not according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and keep not my commands, forever I will maintain my love for my servant. I will punish their crimes with a rod and their guilt with stripes, yet my mercy I will not take from him, nor will I belie my faithfulness. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the Virgin Mary who kept the word of God and pondered it in her heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Each year, the parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival customs. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? 
did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he had said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope um, today is a better day for you. I hope today is a better day for your families. I know this may not be true for everyone especially for those who have lost a lot uh, as a result of this virus and to those who may have lost someone dear to their hearts. You know, that will not be so. That will not be true. But that's my hope and that's my prayer for you. That in spite of the present circumstance and whatever may be occurring right now in your life, that the peace of God that overwhelms every problem that we face may be with you. That God may help you find that peace. Today we listen from the readings. And I'd like to reflect with it from the Gospel reading. Immediately my mind goes to missing children. And mothers or parents of missing children. That's the first thing where my heart goes to as I read this reading and I think about the broken hearts of those parents. In this gospel, Jesus is missing. The parents had gone with him to Jerusalem for the feast. And I would imagine that it must have been an exciting time. It's generally during exciting times that people lower their guards, their security guards. So the parents may have been so excited about the feast and forgot they came to Jerusalem with a kid, a 12 year old. They went back to their hometown of Nazareth and Jesus was not there. Could you imagine, you know, if you had gone to, you know, they, they, they didn't have cars, don't forget, they didn't have phones, they didn't have text messages, they didn't have none of those means of communication. There was no way to call Jesus to find out where he was on the phone or to text him to find out where he was. So could you imagine finding someone during that time? And could you imagine the anxiety that would create? Now, Jerusalem is a big city. Even during those times and so the parents can only imagine how maybe quarreling among themselves and fighting each other while they were coming back why did you not check him but i left him with you why what happened why why did you not track track where he was going from what he was doing what kind of a dad are you what kind of a mom are you i have no doubt this may have been the nature of their interaction on their way back you know going into any place that they know Jesus might visit, their relatives and friends and acquaintances, checking their children. And could you imagine how everyone felt about this young couple or this couple? That they were so irresponsible? Could you imagine even the shame they must have experienced going into their neighborhood and asking for their child? Who should mind your child better than you? I'm sure everyone would think that way about them. But that's the anxiety of parents when they lose their child. And for Mary and Joseph, they found Jesus. But I'm thinking about that parent whose child did not return and has not returned. And that parent who doesn't know whatever happened to their child. I try to imagine how broken that heart is and how broken that heart is going to be to the very last day. That's tough. So maybe you know someone who has lost their child or whose child did not come home. Whose child is missing to this day. I don't know how much you can do for them. 
that at least you can do this. You can pray today for them. Because I believe like the Blessed Mother and Joseph, people in their family may have blamed them, and rightly so, in this case, may have blamed them for whatever happened to Jesus. If they didn't find him, bless God they found him. But even then, people hold you accountable. And when people don't even hold you accountable, you hold yourself accountable. So there are several parents right now who are dealing with serious guilt because their child did not come home. I want you to pray for them. Most of them are being seriously haunted, taking responsibility for whatever happened to that child. Needed to pray for them. Let us pray for them. But today, I, I'm thinking about how many hearts worry about their child. How many hearts are anxious about their child? Not because the child is missing, but every parent is always anxious about the safety, about the future, about the good the blessedness of their child and what the future is going to look for, look like for their child. Every parent worries about that. Do not every parent worries about it at the same, le the same level or the same degree. But I'm sure every parent would want a good future for their child, would want a good life for their child, would want a good, a good, a good maybe spouse, a good job, a good opportunity for their child. It is just a list that parents would wish for their child. That creates anxiety. Why? Because you don't control what that future would look like, what that next job would be like, what the spouse would be like, what the children, your grandchildren would be like. You don't control that. So it creates anxiety because it's completely out of your control. Today, we realize there is someone who understands your anxiety. There is someone who knows what you feel and how you feel, the, the powerlessness and the helplessness you feel in helping determine your child's future. Someone who understands that. That's our blessed mother. In her immaculate heart, she understood all of those things. The scripture tells us here, she pondered all of those things in her heart. Those things that you are pondering right now about your child. Those things that make you worry about your child. You keep them sometimes, you fear to even talk about them to anyone else. There is someone who knows and understands that you can talk to her about that. You can share your, the anxieties and the fears you feel about your children, about your child with her because she understands. She pondered all of those things you're having right now in her own heart. Because she was able to ponder them well. Our heart stayed immaculate, did not break, did not crock. So she knows how to go through all of that and remain intact. You can speak with her. And it's in that vein that I will suggest to you, if you are worried about your children, and rightly so, you may want to consecrate your children to this heart. That means you may want to surrender your children to her, to her motherly care. She knows what it means to lose a child. Now, when you haven't beaten once, naturally your reaction is your antennas goes up. Your antennas go up. You know how to deal with a situation like that next time. So though she didn't do so well here by losing Jesus, she learned in this instance. She learned how to mind your child. So you may want to consecrate. There is a prayer, a consecration to the Immaculate Heart. You may want to consecrate your children. They don't have to be dead. They don't have to be present. You may want to consecrate your children or your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren to this heart if you are anxious or worried about them. Because there is one who understands your anxiety better than anyone else. So that's something that I will encourage you as we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Two things I said today. First, that we pray for missing children. Children 
who did not come home. Now that we pray for their parents. And if those kids are still alive, that our blessed mother would help us to seek and to find them and bring them safely home. And that if we feel anxiety and are anxious about our children or our grandchildren or our great grandchildren, that there is one who understands our anxiety. And even if your child didn't come home, you can still go to this mother. And she can help you. So we can consecrate our children. Even the ones that did not come home, we can consecrate them to our blessed mother. And ask her to help us find a closure to whatever happens. We pray that our blessed mother may journey with us and may help us be the best parents we can be. But above all, that she may be the best mother, spiritual mother for our children and for our grandchildren. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Our response will be hear our prayer. When Mary and Joseph came to Jerusalem seeking their child, they too felt anxiety and confusion. In our own anxieties and confusion, let us bring our prayers to the Father who cherishes, who cherished the heart of our Blessed Mother, and who in her womb brought forth the Savior of the world. For the lowly and humble members of our church, especially the poor, seniors, those who are homebound, and those who are unable to participate in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect for the rights and dignity of women, especially women who are in jail, women who are poor, women of color, women who have no education, women who are exploited and abused around the world. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women who long to bear their own children, especially those who are pregnant at this time, those who haven't pregnant, that lost their children. Those who are praying for a pregnancy. Those who are praying to adopt. That God may open up fresh opportunities and open doors for them to achieve their goals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all unborn infants and their mothers, that the grace of God may protect and shield those children, especially in this moment of great strife and distress. That their parents may safely be delivered of their children in safety and in good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of being able to listen to others, especially at this moment of racial tensions where we are speaking across each other that we may be more open to the struggles of others we may be more open and sensitive to their pain to their hurt and to the injustices endured and that by so doing we may build healthier reliable dependable fair and just societies for all of God's children we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our law enforcement and for all those who endanger their lives every day to keep us safe, our police, our fire departments, our emergency responders, that God may bless them and that God may keep them safe, especially during these very difficult times. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for Jerry Schoenfeld who died yesterday. We pray for his widow, Virginia Schoenfeld, and their two children. Pray and ask that God may be with them at this very difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. All those whose intentions are offered today. Maybe for their birthdays or their wedding anniversaries or other anniversaries or days of celebration. That God may give you many more brilliant and wonderful opportunities in the future to celebrate and show gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to pray with, with us and for us as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life and our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our own Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet virgin Mary. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you put down the mighty and raise up the poor and humble. Aided by the prayers of the Virgin Mary, we entrust our hopes to you. And we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed I, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spirit children. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our gifts and make them the sacraments of our salvation. By its power, warm our hearts with the love of Mary, mother of, mother of the church, and join us more closely with her in sharing the redeeming work of her son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, especially as we praise and proclaim the blessed mother, as we praise and pro as we praise you and proclaim your glory in honor of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She conceived your word in purity of heart, and conceiving in her womb, gave birth to our Savior, and so nurtured the church in its very beginning. She accepted God's pardoning gift of love as she stood beneath the cross, and so became the mother of all those who were brought to life through the death of her only son. She joined her prayers with those of the apostles as together they awaited the Holy Spirit and so became the perfect pattern of the church in prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she cares for the pilgrim church with a mother's love 
following its progress homeward until the day of the Lord dawns in splendor. Now, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as with them we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ brought us, we entreat you that you sanctify these gifts and you make them holy. For when he was about to, be, to set us free, as he reclined at table, he himself took the bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice of blessing in his hands confessing your mercy he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith using the first acclamation. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of, your, of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect love and reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with your very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another and from you. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our Bishop, all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Give rest, O God, to Jerry Schoenfeld. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, to the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to you and to your families, may God's peace rest now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now let us pray for God's grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful most gracious, ever-loving God. We beg you this day for all those who are still unable to receive the Eucharist, that you may minister unto their hearts and souls and spirits and lives, O oh God, that the effect of this sacrament may bless them and bless their homes and bless their hopes and aspirations. We ask, dear God, that they may receive the full benefits of this sacrament spiritually. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we have received the foretaste and promise of the fullness of redemption. We pray that your church, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may proclaim the gospel to all nations and by the power of us of the Spirit reach the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Saint, Saint Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. If you are still unable to attend Mass in your home parish, we'll be having Mass at 9 o'clock and it will be streamed live. So we will appreciate participating with you and celebrating and worshipping God with you. As always, I'd like to end everything I do and say by reminding you 
that you are still the delight of God Almighty and he loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing Hail, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet morn, morning star, so small and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom. Teach us more.